What's up everyone, it's Prometheus and today I'm coming at you with a video about roasting. So what I'm going to do is show you how I develop a roast profile. I'm going to be using my full size Dietrich IR5 to roast this natural Ethiopian. I'm going to show you the cropster all the way through, I'm going to kind of jump a little bit here and there. Uh, but I do want to show you how I go through this process. Um, I know this is something I looked for a lot when I first started roasting and couldn't actually find this type of video. So let's dive in. So what I'm doing right now, I've dropped the green beans in and I'm going to show you just a couple of the things that I do. So down at the bottom you'll see it says turning point. Uh, that's the point at which the room temperature beans reach the same temperature as the drum and begins to rise. So if you look over to the left, that upper blue line is the rate of rise. So you see how it's dropping and starting to curl up. As soon as that hits the base and starts to climb up, that means that's the rate of rise. The lower blue line is the bean temperature. Uh, shortly you'll see that come up from the bottom left hand side. So let's just take a look here and keep watching. I'll probably jump forward a little bit to show you how this process goes. At this point I'm just going to be watching the rate of rise and the bean temp, making sure things are looking normal and running smoothly. The bean temp is the one that we're going to be paying the most attention to when we're creating the profile. As you can see, I skipped forward a little bit, uh, and so we're trying to wait for this to peak out. So I'm using a standard drum roaster, so it takes quite a while for it to hit that peak. Uh, I'm going to make a note of the rate of rise max. That's only for uh, repeatability. So when myself or my assistant roaster needs to roast this coffee, uh, that's the key that we're trying to hit. So it carries us through the roast at the same time every time. So from here I'm noticing it start to drop. So what I want to do is allow the bean temperature to peak naturally and then begin to descend. So moving forward I want to just assist in that gradual drop, paying attention to the rate of rise, making sure the numbers aren't going up. So you see how it says 20.6 at the rate of rise uh, line. I want that to keep continually dropping at a relatively even rate. Um, and then by the time I reach first crack, which we'll talk about later, I want that to be a 10 or so. Um, so as you see, I'm putting in 4WC. Uh, so what WC stands for water column. So that's just the measurement of gas pressure that's used on this roaster. And I think quite a few roasters, but this is the only one I've ever used. Um, so I'll be marking that along the way. Again, this is just for repeatability for my sake, my assistant roaster. Uh, so if we really like this profile, we can repeat it. Uh, over and over and over again. Next part of the roast I'm going to be looking for is the color change. So the color change is when the coffee goes from that green uh, to bright green and then to yellow. So here's what it looks like when it very early roast and this is what it looks like when it turns yellow. So we're going to be watching for that, that yellow point is an important piece of the puzzle because that's called the Maillard reaction. So in, in terms of cooking, that reaction is developing all of the, the sugars, the sweetness, things like that. Uh, there are other schools of thought on this. I'm not saying what I'm doing is right or wrong, uh, but this is just how I was trained, what I've gleaned off of other roasters, reading books. Uh, roasting is definitely not a black and white thing. So there's a lot of gray area. There's a lot of room for uh, exploration. And so, Take this with a grain of salt and I'd love to definitely have a discussion down in the comments with everybody, uh, especially if you're roasting yourself or have questions about roasting. I uh, definitely just like to pick up as much information as I can from other roasters. So uh, feel free to drop a comment uh, if you have a different technique or other ideas. I've only been roasting for about a year, uh, so these are all just things that I've picked up in that time. So. There's definitely no right or wrong answers here. I just wanted to show the way how I do it and then how I develop a coffee. At this point, I'm preparing for a first crack, so I'm increasing the airflow to the drum to remove any smoke or chaff from the drum during that point. Uh, so the Dietrich has three uh, levels of airflow, so I'm at max airflow right now and I'm preparing to set off first crack 
generally it happens for me most coffees in the in the 390 range uh, but these naturals tend to go a little bit later so as you'll see it doesn't start popping till later uh, and when it does that it means that the temperature starts peaking up a little bit on me uh, it doesn't go up a massive amount ideally i want a nice clean line all the way down but sometimes you just can't stop that train once it starts going out of the station so i'm just trying to roll with it and then i'm going to start pulling some samples uh, to take a look at that so i've hit first crack you'll see the percentage at the top there and the time after first crack that's uh, shown below the total duration so i'm going to start pulling some samples out uh, get as many as I can before it hits zero. So once the rate of rise hits zero, then your coffee runs the risk of becoming baked. So you get kind of those flat flavors, you lose a lot of sweetness, things like that. So I'm trying to pull samples far enough apart to get a nice basis of understanding how it tastes at different levels of roast, different temperatures, and making notes of that so I can uh, try them and then figure out where I want to end the roast So it's unusual how hot this one is. I don't usually drop coffees this hot, especially something like a natural Ethiopian, but because the roast uh, didn't start popping until around 400 degrees, uh, I wanted to make sure I gave it at least, you know, 15 to 20 degrees of development time uh, during that whole process. So uh, 417, 420 in that range was where I ended up dropping this and maybe another batch or two that I did to test. Uh, so now I'm just letting it cool to room temperature and I'm just going to take a look for evenness of roast. And if I see them, I'll snatch up any Quakers. So I'll show you Quakers in the next slide. Basically, Quakers are beans that were harvested before they hit peak ripeness, and they just don't really take on the roast. So I find the most of them in natural coffees, uh, but you'll find them in most, if not all, coffees sometimes. Uh, it is considered a defect in a high number of coffee, but this is a grade one Ethiopian natural, so this is a really nice coffee. And last but not least, let's take a look at the roast profile. So the blue one here is the one you just watched me create. The red one is the one I decided was going to be the production roast. So I made a few changes, uh, an earlier drop temperature. It actually created an earlier first crack. I did a little bit more in terms of development time, uh, a lighter drop. So I dropped the coffee at 403 instead of 410. All those factors came into play to where it created a sweeter, uh, more floral and fruity cup for this Ethiopian natural than the previous one which just came across a little bit lighter it lacks some body and, and just kind of seemed a look to fade a little bit quicker um, so that's how I create rose profiles uh, obviously cupping is going to be the most important piece of the puzzle when it comes to picking which one you want to use as your production but overall that's how I do it Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Spermetheus, the blog at Spermetheus.com. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.